One of the more common questions I receive often is how do you take thick metal like this flange material and weld to thin metal like this tube? Well, more so, how do you do it without cooking the crap out of it, blowing holes in it, getting good solid penetration on it, and doing it without warping it? Well, I've got just the episode for you if that was the question you're asking. And it's only going to be found on this episode of the Fabrication Series. All right, so let's get started here. We have some 3 8 thick or 10 millimeter 1018 cold roll steel, which is very popular in flange material. We also have two different tubes that we're going to weld them up to. They are both inch and three quarter or 44 millimeter outside diameter with a 16 gauge wall, which is roughly 1.6 millimeters. And we also have a piece of inch and a half schedule 10 pipe which is all very common stuff you find at least in the automotive performance fabrication industry. So, we're going to weld these up just a little bit different each time, but we are going to focus on three different common ways that you find, say, something like a header or a turbo manifold welded up in the automotive performance fabrication industry. So the first piece of stainless is going to go straight through the flange all the way through to the other side, and we're going to weld it on both sides. The mild steel tube and the stainless steel pipe are going to be butt welded with the inside diameter of the tube or the pipe matching the diameter of the hole. So let's get started. Now I'm just going to let this run here for a second as I start this weld up here and see if you can see exactly what it is that I'm doing that's different. Let's freeze it right there. Focus is your key word. That is exactly what we're talking about when we talk about the direction that the tungsten is pointing. It is the focus. So if we bring up the cross section here, it is a little bit dark. We see the tube on the top, we see the flange at the bottom, but look where the focus of the actual arc is. Look really, really carefully. Now if I bisect this area, you can see that it actually lands just below the area of where that joint is actually located. We're focusing our heat on the actual flange side more than we are on the tube side because the flange can actually take the heat whereas the tube cannot. But once the puddle actually builds and kind of blends its way in, everything will make it through just fine. Remember, focus more on the flange and let the puddle build. As we continue on here, you can see pretty much exactly what that looks like, including on my stop and starts. So let's get down in here on a restart. Can I see in close here? You notice my focus is still toward the bottom of the puddle. And the reason why is because we still don't want it to actually blow through the tube at, a, at the amperage that we're running here. Now this you can actually see is some of the challenges of working around a camera. My torch angle gets kind of extreme. But either way, we get it done. And that's pretty much the technique that you need to follow. Now this is on stainless steel. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. There is a reason why I did not purge this. And it's because you can actually see it. But keep in mind, if you do not purge something like this, this is the result you get. It looks absolutely terrible, and it will happily snap itself right off of there because it is extremely weak. But either way, you notice that the only point where I did not get some great penetration or full penetration on this is actually where my stop and starts are, which I circled here in red. But the rest of it was a good continuous bead all the way through it, except for the fact that we didn't purge. Again, make sure that you purge. But either way, it was a good solid bead all the way through with the exception of the stop and start. But either way you slice it, this will hold if it was properly purged and it's good to go. So let's move on to some mild steel here. I'm going to get this piece all tacked up. Just a couple of little togenous tack welds. I'll show you how to do those in just a minute here. And as soon as we get one on each side here, we'll move on down the line. Now remember the positioning on this one. I told you before that we were going to butt these welds right up to the top of it. So this one is actually resting on top of the flange. But the same rule applies because we're working on a thin piece of tubing and we're welding it up to a thick piece of metal, which is our flange. Now 
Now, even when welding these in the butt weld joint configuration, the whole concept of focus still remains the same. We must focus our arc or focus our tungsten and point it right down at the flange material because the flange can take the heat. Remember, it's six times the thickness of this wall on this tube right now. So the focus remains at the flange. We let the puddle build its way up into the tube and we just roll on down the line just like we're supposed to, like we're welding any other joint. The amperage remains the same from the machine, everything else stays the same. Both of these two pieces have been welded the exact same amperage full throttle the entire way through. It's just about that focus and making sure it stays right on point, right where it needs to be, which is more on the flange than on the tube. Now we'll take a look on the inside here and we can see that we have full penetration all the way through with the exception of these two little spots which are also coincide with my stop starts. It's super ugly, but it does the job, it'll definitely hold. Now let's take a look at some autogenous welds, or welding without filler, which you commonly see using intact welds. Did you see that? Well, let's break down the mechanics of it. Now first we're going to focus our arc right down into the root of that joint. Then you're going to see a puddle start to form on the pipe itself because the pipe is thinner than the flange. As soon as gravity takes over, it's going to pull the puddle downward toward the flange, and at that point I'm going to move the torch downward to focus it in on the flange itself. Now it does undercut the pipe a little bit, but remember this is just a tack weld. We're going to fill all that back in as soon as we make our pass. So let's run this over in slow motion again real quick and see exactly how it happens step by step. First comes our focus. We're going to point it right down into the root of that joint. Next comes our puddle. It's going to start forming on the pipe before it forms on the flange because the pipe is thinner. Then it's going to blend. Just like that, gravity took over and I'm going to move the torch down just a little bit to blend it all in there. Now that was in super slow motion, so I'm going to speed it up and run it back and forth so you can actually see kind of the mechanics of it. Maybe this will help a little bit. Heat it, move it, blend it. Now this does take a lot of practice. And practice makes perfect, so it's a little tricky, but you can definitely get it. So let's move on to our piece of stainless pipe. Now again, this was done the same way as before, as with our mild steel tube. It is butt welded at the top. The inside diameter of the pipe matches the diameter of the hole. And we're going to work our way around it, just the same as we did before, with one exception, and that is our focus. Now let's see if you can catch this one. Move it along, move it along, everything's flowing nice and smooth. Get up to our tack weld here, and let's freeze it there. If I bisect this just the same as I did before, you notice where my focus is, which is a little bit more central, still slightly under the halfway point, but it is a little bit more central, which means we have a little bit more heat. Now, since a lot of people like to see me screw up, check out this good old tip and dip right here, right at the end of it. Did it, did it, did it, did it, just like Morse code. Yeah. That happened, but oh well, only had one shot. Penetration was a little bit less on this one due to the thickness, but the exact same amperage the entire way through, it's good to go. This will definitely hold if it was properly purged, which of course again, it was not. So I have one more piece for you guys here, and this is where you can see an extreme amount of focus in a different direction. Now remember our first piece of stainless, I said we were gonna weld both sides. Well, this is the back side of that first piece of stainless tube. Look very carefully at where the focus is versus where the edge of the tube is. And you can see why it's very important that you need to make sure that your focus stays in the right spot. Otherwise, that little section of tube there is going to fall down after getting superheated. The flange is not going to get heated up at all. And the whole thing's pretty much just going to fall apart on you. Go falling right down through the inside of the tube there. And just pretty much grenade or self-destruct or destroy itself. So it is very important that you have your focus in the right spot. Now, just to recap here, this entire piece, every single piece, the tubes, the mild, the stainless, the pipe, the backside, the everything, was done at the exact same amperage of 100 amps, full throttle, the entire way through, every single joint. Now, this is pretty much what I got out of the back end. Super easy to do. All you got to do is focus. Maybe a little shorter video than usual, but hopefully that helps you understand it just a little bit. Now you just got to get out there and practice a bit. Now, if you have any more questions, you can always drop them down in the comments box below, or you can hit me up on the FabricationSeries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator, or Facebook.com slash thefabricatorseries. Now, all of that info is in the description below, and of course, I always try to get back to everybody the best I can. So, definitely get out there, try this out, see what you can do. If you got any questions, I'm here. We'll see you guys on the next episode.